what happens after death what lies beyond the chandogya upanishad an ancient vedantic text gives a very interesting explanation on the journey of the soul after death the text contains a narrative which details the five questions put forth by king pravahana jayavali to swetaketu the son of seju dalaka in the earlier video we answered the fifth question and saw several interesting concepts and symbolisms underlying words like somo raja the real meaning of the word yagna among other things now we come to this question of what happens to the soul after death the exact journey and the various paths that it can take according to the ancient text when once life is done the vital force the prana leaves the body the soul can then take two paths according to the merits the deeds of the person the first path described here is the northern path the uttarayana marga this path is also called the archiradi marga the shining path or the devayana marga the path of the celestials this is the path for the austere renunciates who have lived life in accordance with dharma and fully cognizant of the fact that they are one with the absolute these souls they follow what is called the devayana pada the path of the gods or demigods now the text states that once the soul of these realized individuals departs the body guided by the celestials it reaches the realm of fire presided by agni from there it moves further to the realm of the day and from there it moves on to the world of the bright fortnight the period of the waxing moon from there it moves further to the realm of the six months of the sun moving to the north and from there it moves to the realm of the entire year and from here it finally moves on to the sun this is important and after this stop the soul moves up to the higher realm of existence and enjoys the aspect of the divine then there is a flash of lightning there arrives an amanuva purusha a superhuman being a superhuman force which takes the soul to the brahma loka and onwards towards liberation now this is what the text says in terms of the generally good people regular individuals but those who do not realize the oneness and the true nature of reality their souls follow the path of the ancestors called the pitrayana marga and this path is also called the dhuma marga the path of smoke this is also the path of return because the soul is still stuck in the cycle of birth and death the text details this path in a rather cryptic and mysterious way via the realm of the smoke the soul of the departed goes to the world of the night from night they go onwards towards the world of the dark fortnight and from the dark fortnight they go to the world of the six months where the sun moves to the south unlike the realized souls that follow the northern path these souls never reach the world of the year from the six months they go to the world of the ancestors the pitra loka and from there they go to the realm of space from space they go to the chandra loka the world of the moon the text then states that this soul becomes food for the celestials the devas it states this is king soma this is the food of the gods the gods enjoy eating this food and when the meritorious deeds of the soul are exhausted the soul again begins its descent into the earth now the text states something very mysterious about the gods small g which refer to the celestials eating the soul as food we will first take a look at all the symbolisms behind these two paths and then come to these interesting points we first need to understand the symbolism of the sun and the moon in this particular context the context of the cycle of birth and death the sun is the source of light the moon reflects the source but it is not the source this is a symbolism of the jivatma the self and the paramatma the supreme absolute the sun symbolizes the source 
the infinite absolute, the permanent. The moon symbolizes the self, the Atman, that is just a reflection of the source, a spark of the source. In other ancient cultures across the world too, this symbolism was prevalent, although it's been misunderstood over the years. Realized individuals are always in cognizance of the fact that the self is a part of the Supreme Absolute. In the first mode of departure too, we see this aspect. Fire is the source and smoke is just byproduct of the fire. So the realized leave via the realm of Agni, fire, whereas those who are in ignorance of the true nature of reality leave via the realm of smoke. The next stop too is a symbol of the same. Day, when everything is illuminated by the source. Night, when one is ignorant of the source. Now the soul moves on and arrives at its next stop, the bright lunar fortnight, called the Shukla Paksha. This is a period of the waxing moon, when the moon goes from the new moon to the full moon. The full moon symbolizes the fact that the self, the mind, is illuminated completely by the source. It symbolizes the move from ignorance to knowledge. The move that makes the self aware of the unity with the Supreme Absolute. Now the dark lunar fortnight, which occurs in the path taken by the regular individuals, is called the Krishna Paksha and it is the period of the waning moon, when the moon goes from the full moon to the new moon, the move from light to darkness. The northern transit of the sun similarly represents a summer solstice where the potency of the source is at its maximum. The days are longer than the nights. Southern transit represents the winter solstice. Now let us look at the path of the ancestors, the path of smoke, the southern path, because there is a very high chance that most of us here would take this path. The soul moves on from the six months of the sun moving southward and then stops at the world of the ancestors. The Pitra Loka is the realm of the ancestors. According to ancient texts, the Pitra Loka is somewhere between the Bhu Loka, earth, and the Bhuvar Loka, the realm above the earth. The Upanishad places it in this location, but certain Puranic narratives place the Pitra Loka near the abode of Yama. But what is important is to understand that not any ancestor is a Pitra. Only ancestors who lived life by the tenets of Dharma and accrued merits on account of their karma qualify to become Pitrus. Pitrus are actually associated with Yama, the Lord of Death, who in fact is a very benevolent teacher. Now, the soul of the deceased, still attached to the material world, it stops there to learn from the Pitrus. After the stop at the abode of the ancestors, the soul journeys on to Akasha, space, and then moves on to the world of the moon, Chandra Loka. And this is where things get really mysterious. The text mentions that these souls become Somo Raja, the food for the gods. In the earlier video also we saw this meaning of the mysterious word Soma. The text also says that the souls enjoy their time here till their merits are exhausted and then continue on their descent towards another birth. Now, are souls food for the gods, celestials? Does the moon somehow take in these souls to become food for the gods? Now, if you dig really deep into ancient cultures and esoteric texts all across the world, we do see some amount of the moon and soul symbolism. From a Dharmic perspective, however, this is the explanation for the souls being food for the celestials, or should I say this is my explanation for the souls being food for the celestials. Now all that exists is the Supreme Absolute, the Infinite Consciousness. There are various aspects of the Infinite Consciousness, various manifestations, some of which might be more qualified than the others. There are different types of celestials, Devas, Dhanavas, Daityas, vibrating, for lack of a better word, at a different level depending on their guna, their qualities. There are humans and other sentient beings who also 
have the spark of the divine, the self within them, which is a part of the supreme absolute. And finally, there is this Godhead, the ultimate qualified aspect of this infinite consciousness. Now, I'm going to be taking physics as an analogy and explain a few things. This is not meant to be scientific, rather to give you an understanding of the philosophy via an analogy. Each atom has its own frequency and various frequencies combine to form a waveform. All objects behave like waves to a certain extent. Whenever two or more waves travel through the same medium, the waves pass through each other and then onwards. The medium that underlies the waves gets displaced at the point of their interaction. The displacement is the sum of these individual waves that are interacting. Now, consider two waves with the same amplitude which are in phase with each other, which means their troughs and crests align. Now, the wave that is a result of the interference of these two waves is a larger wave with an amplitude that is twice the amplitude of the small wave. This is called constructive interference. If these two waves are not in phase, that is, the trough of one aligns with the crest of the other, the result is zero. The two waves cancel themselves out. This is destructive interference. The natural frequency of any object increases in amplitude and resonates when a force of the same frequency is applied to it. And in this case, the merits of the soul, the dharmic deeds when living, make them resonate with the celestials who are already in harmony with the universe. This resonance is the enjoyment they get. This interaction with the celestials is what is being referred to in the text as food for the gods, the soul becoming food for the gods. Once the merits are exhausted, the interaction ceases and the soul continues on with its journey. These are all a part of the medium that is the Brahman, the infinite consciousness. These individual souls, these celestials, all of these are part of the medium that is the Brahman the infinite consciousness. These good qualities are actually being amplified in these higher levels of consciousness and enjoyed by certain qualified aspects of the Supreme Absolute itself. There are many different phrases that attest to this fact. Sarvam Kalividam Brahma All that exists is the Brahman. Sarvam Sivamayam All that exists is Sivam. The infinite God energy and everything that is animated is a dance of delight of various frequencies of the Supreme Absolute. So in summary, those who do not realize oneness or the infinite nature of consciousness, they go via the path of the moon. And this path, in fact, might offer temporary heavens and pleasures, but they will come back. From this step, the souls then begin their descent onwards towards the earth as described in the previous video. Now let us look at the Devayanapatha, the path taken by the realized individuals. They travel towards the source symbolized by the sun and at that point, after spending some time in the higher realms of consciousness, there is a flash of lightning. This flash of lightning is actually the flash of realizing the knowledge of the ultimate reality, the ego, the I, the individuality or whatever remains of it drops. Then there is an Amanava Purusha, a superhuman being, a force that leads the soul towards Brahma Loka. Now what is interesting here is that this Brahma Loka is the highest realm among the 14 worlds created by Brahma, the creative aspect of the Supreme Absolute. This is not the point of liberation, but a stage to begin the process of liberation. After many lives and many, many years of experience, the soul has returned closer to its essence. The ancient texts describe the Brahma Loka as a place where the self, which is pure-minded, free of desires, dissolved of ego, and fully cognizant of its union with the Supreme Absolute, resides here. There, these souls meditate to move past to liberation. Some ancient texts also mention that when the final dissolution occurs, which is when the infinite God energy dissolves itself in pralaya and recreates its dance of delight, 
these souls these aspects of the infinite consciousness are the first to be reanimated as always the known is a drop and the unknown is an ocean peace <laughs>